Back on the podcast, happy to be joined by Kendall Hinton of the Denver Broncos. You know, I hesitate to say wide receiver of the Denver Broncos or quarterback of the Denver Broncos because I'm really not sure what he is right now at this moment. But I suppose you go back to being a wide receiver. Kendall, you've had quite a last few days. How are you? Doing well, Peter. Uh, um, yeah, the weekend has definitely been hectic, but, you know, kind of settling down and really absorbing, you know, all the thing that, things that's happened and, um, you know, reaching out to all the people that supported me. So if we can, um, as I said, when I, in the introduction of the podcast, this is really one of the craziest stories that I remember in all my years covering football. Um, and I guess it's logical to think that crazy stories are going to happen when a pandemic is sort of wreaking havoc on football. But I, I just want to go back and tell a little bit about your story and where you came from. Okay, so you went to Wake Forest and you went to Wake Forest. You enrolled in Wake for at Wake Forest as a quarterback, correct? Right, right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your high school career and what caused you to go to Wake Forest. Right. So um, you know, I went to went to high school in, in Durham, North Carolina. Um, you know, we had we had successful uh, you know, junior senior year. We won a state championship. Um, had a pretty good season at quarterback, um, both that junior and senior year, and got offers from uh, ACC schools around the area, uh, Duke, NC State, um, Wake Forest, and it, it pretty much came down between those three. Um, and, you know, Wake Forest offered, uh, you know, a great academic opportunity and, you know, also being able to play power five football. And Duke uh, was actually in my hometown, so kind of wanted to get away and wait for us as best option. So what was your quarterback career like at Wake Forest? You played for a while and then they shifted you to wide receiver. Tell me what happened there. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my experience at Wake Forest was kind of crazy. Um, so I came in uh, my freshman year and kind of competed with uh, John Walford, who, who's actually with the Rams um, now. And, you know, we competed my, my freshman year and, um, you know, John ended up getting the, getting the reins and, you know, beginning of the season, they gave me a, a shot. John got hurt and, you know, I did pretty well. And um, for the rest of the season, we kind of went back and forth and um, going to my sophomore year, uh, I was, you know, I got, I got to start week two, um, ended up getting injured and uh, set me out for that year. I uh, kept coming back and, you know, I had some issues uh, at quarterback just with confidence and, and my mojo. And, you know, um, they asked me to to look at some different positions and receiver was one of them. Um, and I had some success, you know, at receiver. And uh, so we, we did that throughout training camp, my red shirt junior year. And we had some injuries at quarterback uh, that season. So I had to kind of play back, uh, both positions and never got to really focus on either one. Um, so that was kind of up and down year for me as well. And, and then coming into my senior year, I actually, you know, it was the first time I got to focus on the receiver position and, 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 you know, put all my energy there and it, it turned out to be a great season for me. So your senior year in 2019 at Wake Forest, 73 catches, 1,001 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, you also returned punts and kickoffs as well. Did you feel like, if you went to the NFL and had a shot at the NFL, it was definitely going to be at the receiver position. Oh yeah. No question. No question. And tell me about after your year last year at Wake Forest, what happened? Uh, what was the, uh, what was the pre draft uh, situation for you? Like, and did you talk to a lot of teams? Yeah. So, um, you know, coming out of, uh, that my senior year, coming off a, a thousand yard receiving season, um, I was feeling pretty good about, you know, coming to the draft. I knew I, I, I was, you know, early at the position and not, not a lot of people knew about me, but, um, you know, I was confident in my abilities and, you know, excited to show what I could do for pro day. And, you know, just with the, the year we've had 2020 and, you know, COVID season has been, 
you know, crazy year for everybody. And so uh, our pro day ended up getting canceled. Uh, so I really wasn't able to show, you know, what I could do and, you know, wasn't able to get my name out there. So it, it, it definitely hurt me. It definitely hurt a lot of guys. Um, some guys didn't even get that, that opportunity. Uh, you know, so so come draft day, you know, I was hoping to hear my name called day three and, you know, it went by and the Broncos give me a call, uh, you know, a few minutes after the draft. And, you know, even though they drafted three receivers, they, you know, they told me, hey, we, we're going to bring you up here as an undrafted guy and, you know, give you a shot during training camp. And, you know, I just took and ran with it. Okay, so you go to training camp, you come down to the final cut, you don't make the, you know, you don't make the team. And I wonder what happened after that? Did you go on the practice squad right away? Or was there a, a pre, there, were the, there was a time between you got cut and you were brought back to the practice squad? Right, so yeah, the final day of training camp, uh, you know, they made final cuts and I didn't make it. So I was waived um, and, you know, hoping to hear back from a team and, and and no luck there. So I headed back home. Uh, I stayed out in Georgia for a bit and I was back in Durham for a bit, you know, here just trying to stay in shape, hoping to get a call back. And, you know, but also, you know, taking real life into consideration, you know, looking for opportunities in the in the corporate world and, you know, in, in, in different, different avenues. So uh, I found something on a, uh, on a LinkedIn page that you were basically into, you were called a fundraising coach at right. Vertical Rays in Durham. Right. And, and it said, and, and describing yourself, it says, current NFL free agent looking to kickstart a career in the medical sales industry where I can learn, grow, and develop both personally and professionally. So basically, it seemed like if, you, if this is what your fate was, you were ready to move on with your life. Yeah, you know, um, you know, football has always been a passion. It's always been a dream. And I, I was so grateful for it, the opportunity that the Broncos gave me just to, you know, come in and, and give it a shot. Um, you know, but it, when I got waived, didn't get a call and, you know, didn't have any money in my pocket and had to, you know, kind of figure out what, what I was going to do. And, you know, Wake Forest gave me the opportunity with that, the degree that I had and, I was pretty much started to think about real life. Um, so tell me when the Broncos called you and what they said when they called you back. Yeah, so this was about two weeks um, after I had started with Vertical Rays. And yeah, I actually moved in with my sister into a new home and, um, you know, getting settled in there and getting ready to start this new job. and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm walking through Lowe's going to get some, some stuff for a new room. And my agent calls me and he says, Hey, like, you, you know, you got some cold gear. And I'm like, no, but it's no issue to go get some. And he says, uh, that the Broncos want you back. You're going to need to hop on a plane, um, tomorrow afternoon and they'll have you back there and, you know, back for practice squad. Wow. Were you what thought goes through your mind when you're walking through Lowe's and your agent calls and says you're going to the NFL? Right. I just wanted to, you know, drop everything I was doing to run out the, out the building. It was, you know, it was amazing to hear because for me, I honestly thought it was, you know, that was the end of my career. And, you know, it was just to get another chance. It was, it took a while to, to kind of sink in. So you get back to Denver. This was about a month ago, right? I think it was in week nine. You get back to Denver and you're just sort of, you know, continuing to do what you did in training camp, uh, you know, learning everything about the receiver position there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I get back here and it's, you know, we had about four or five, four or five weeks during training camp that to learn the offense and, and so I'm getting back here and it's still, you know, fairly new. So I'm, I'm still trying to learn everything that I can and as well as not to rust off um, and, and get back into the groove of things. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it has been starting from new, but it's, you know, definitely getting back here and, and learning a lot of things that, you know, I might forgot. 
last Saturday, do, do practice squad players go through, you know, the, the sort of Saturday walkthrough? Are you guys a part of that? Yeah, so on Saturday, we'll, we'll actually serve the, our offense. So we'll play, um, you know, I'm usually playing cornerback for <laughs> our, uh, our offense on Saturdays. Um, and that, that Saturday walkthrough at around 12, I was, you know, I was just a, a cornerback you know, guarding our receivers and, and giving a look. And four o'clock the afternoon, you know, I was told I was going to be quarterback. Yeah. Um, so are you shutting down Jerry Judy every time you do that in practice? <laughs> yeah, I do what I can <laughs> with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened on Saturday? Tell me, tell me everything that happened when sort of late afternoon, everything starts to change. Uh, did you first hear that all of your quarterbacks might be inactive because of COVID? Yeah, so we had, um, you know, we're at walkthrough and, you know, we see that all the guys are, are pulled out of walkthrough. And so it's still, we still don't, aren't quite sure what's, what the situation is. And at the practice, you know, our coach tells us what, what happened and, you know, what can be at stake. And, and so we, you know, we're just kind of hoping for the best and, later that afternoon it was you know people hit me up like hey you know you know be ready or you know whatever it is but it was all kind of jokingly um yeah until about four o'clock that afternoon but even when even when Vic Fangio is telling the team that these guys aren't gonna play are you thinking at all hey I might play quarterback tomorrow yeah I'm I'm thinking um you know no shot is it's actually gonna happen and um yeah a couple of guys had joked about it and you know it's it's funny my coach actually asked me when's the last time you threw earlier that week but you no know, I, I had no idea um you know I, that something like this can happen and so it was, it was a huge surprise when i got that call when is when's the first moment you got an indication you might be playing yeah i had no clue until i actually um you know got that call later that afternoon who called you my position coach with uh, coach uh, Zach Mazzani. And uh, what exactly did he say? You know, he said, hey, buddy, uh, you know, get ready. You're suiting up for quarterback tomorrow. Um, you know, we're going to need you back in facility so we can learn as much as we can tonight. And, um, you know, get ready, to, get ready to go play. You went back to the facility um, and tell me who was there. Was it? Uh, Coach Pat Shermer, uh, Mike Shula. I mean, who who is there to work with you that evening? Yeah, so I walk up the stairs, and it's pretty much every offensive, um, you know, coach and, and quality control guy up there, and um, <laughs> they're all waiting for me. And you know, so that's that's pretty stressful. You walk up there, and you see all the stress on the guy's face. And uh, I talk to Coach Shermer, and we he kind of gives me an overview of what we're gonna do, and. I go hook up with uh, Coach Shula and, you know, we kind of grind out some of the details and try to get this, the game plan down as, as best we could. So what exactly does Pat Shermer say that, you know, I'm sure he's trying to make it seem very normal, but, you know, hey, um, you know, 12 hours ago, you were just a guy who was going to watch this game just like everybody else. And now right. – you're going to be playing quarterback against the number three defense in football. So right. what, what does he, what's he say to you at that moment? Yeah. I, so everybody understood the, the situation. Um, you know, they understood how long it's been since I, I've been behind the center. And, and so they were, they were, they were just encouraging, um, you know, they, they wanted to, to make sure I was, you know, comfortable with, with the game plan and, you know, they just told me to go out there, have fun, and, and, and do the best I could. And how long were you there on Saturday evening sort of learning uh, from Mike Shula? Yeah, so we um, – I got there around 6. Uh, we, we ran through as much as we could on paper. Um, and, you know, we walked through some things before the – our entire offense got there, and we were able to do a, a short walkthrough. Um, and, you know, we kind of stayed after a little bit and walked through some things. So give and take about about two hours. Can you tell me after not having played quarterback for a while, I, I, 
I even wonder about the center snap. Are you going to be entirely in shotgun so they don't even work on the center snap or or how exactly? Let, let's just talk about something so basic like the center snap. Yeah, and it's it's funny, you know, most most people who've never played the position, you know, don't understand uh, you know, all that goes into a, a QB center exchange. Um and, you know, that's that's something that you overlook and you don't you don't really look to, but guys are, are practicing that every day at practice. And, you know, so we, that's not something we want to just jump into with without being able to get any practice and, and shotgun was the was the best option for us. Um what else would you say, you know, is your is your mind really racing uh, on Saturday night when you're thinking about this? Are you pretty calm? What exactly is going through your mind? Yeah, it's, um, you know, at the moment I got the call, yeah, my mind was racing. Uh, you know, it was, it, it was a crazy moment. Um, got the walkthroughs and, and saw how, how encouraging the guys were and, you know, saw how all of them had my back. And, you know, that definitely helped out going into, um, you know, trying to sleep that night and, and going into Sunday, you know. Uh, you know, Nurse was there. It was still going to be my first NFL game and, you know, prom time Sunday. But, you know, it, it definitely calmed me out to know that the guys had my back. Um, if you can, tell me, tell me, take me into – let's say one of the veterans, say Yvonne Miller or, or somebody, what uh, Justin Simmons before the game or, or Saturday night, tell me something that somebody said to you that you think is particularly memorable. Yeah. Uh, you know, Greg Bowles, he came to me. Um, this know, your left tackle. Left tackle and, and Dalton Reisner as well. Um, you know, those guys stayed in my ear, uh, especially, you know, heading to the stadium Sunday morning, um, you know, like, hey, you know, no matter what happens, we got your back. You know, we're going to do all we can to protect you. And, you know, that that just makes me want to fight and do all I can for those guys as well. Um, you know, and they, they stayed in my ear all day and encouraged me and kept me uplifted. On Sunday morning, you actually did sort of, I, I take it you continued a bit of the walkthrough deal right in the little press conference room next to the locker room i guess with uh with coaches shula and Shermer. tell me what that was like in the morning right before the game well yeah we couldn't really do much um so we just you know kind of ran over things tried to work on uh you know my huddle presence how i'm going to talk to the guys in the huddle and you know working on some some footwork kind of things for the for the handoffs and yeah, as much as we could. And... It's interesting. You talk about the huddle presence. What was their advice about that? Yeah, uh, you know, enunciate. Um, you know, make sure you're loud, and you just got to speak with confidence. You can't, you can't go in the huddle, you know, whispering to to these other guys, and you know, there's no confidence in the office. So you just got to bring that. When you jogged out for warmups before the game. Did it hit you at all that this is one of the craziest things you could ever imagine? Yeah, I honestly can't say it hit me until, you know, after the game and the next day until I really got to absorb the moment. It was it was seriously just unreal. Sunday, you know, running out on the field, you know, warming up, running through the tunnel. It was it was surreal. It it yeah, it didn't even feel real. Um so it's tough to really to really absorb the moment until until days later. Yeah. Um, when you go in the game, I wonder uh, your emotions stepping into the huddle. I know that on the first couple of snaps, Philip Lindsay took direct snaps, and then you came in. I think the last play of this series. What do you remember when you stepped into the huddle for the first time? Yeah, um, you know, I remember coach calling the play, and I remember, you know, my left arm just shaking as I try to, you know, try to read these tiny words on the wristband, and you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look calm as I can out there, but you know, the the nerves are taking over, and I'm just, 
you know, trying to trying to be the be the best quarterback I can be and you know, show the guys that how confident I'm gonna be at back there, but definitely jittery for sure. Your first snap, you threw an incompletion. And I think it was Cam Jordan who was kind of coming in as a as a heavy rush. And I this was the other thing. You're playing the number three defense in football. There's Cam Jordan, there's uh Demario Davis. Uh, there's Malcolm Jenkins. There's Lattimore. This is a really, really good NFL defense. And I wonder, did it hit you when you were looking across the line of scrimmage? Man, most of these guys have been in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's not something I really thought about, you know, during the game. It was it, it was, it was back to football. Um, you, you definitely notice the size of these guys. You notice the speed. Um, and you notice the the difference in the game speed overall, but you know at the end of the day it was still football, and you know you you just kind of get tunnel vision when you're out there, and you don't really notice those those sort of things until the after the moment. On your third series, um, or I think yeah, on your third series, you scrambled around right in on a third and nine, um, a little bit late in the first quarter. You got five yards, you get tackled by Quan Alexander. And, you know, I wonder, do you recall that play? And do you recall thinking, was it a, was it a designed run? Or did you just not find somebody open? Yeah, so, no, it wasn't um, It wasn't a designed run. It was a uh, drop back pass. Um, and, you know, for anybody who's never played a position, uh, sitting in the pocket is – it's, it's one of those, you know, hardest things to do in football. And, um, you know, especially for someone who hasn't experienced it, um, you know, trying to trying to work the pocket was tough. So, you know, I was just trying to get out the pocket and, and use my legs. And, um, yeah, it, it's funny. I, I actually went over to the sideline after that play and, and told the guys, like, you know, i never seen somebody close that fast, uh, especially that size. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was my first time I got tackled in, in I guess, two, two, three years. Yeah. Did getting tackled feel kind of good to you? Did, did it make you at all feel like, hey, man, I'm in a football game now? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It brought it brought back the, um, you know, the reality that hey, this is just football. Um, you know, it's you run the ball and, and guys are going to tackle you. It, it it actually felt great to you know, take a lick and then and kind of relax my nerves. What was halftime like? What was Coach Shula and, and Pat Shermer saying to you? You know, just keep keep fighting. Uh, you know, stay at it, keep competing and and, and continue to do the best you can. Uh, you know, just wanted to take care take care of the ball and, and try to minimize um, you know, the the, the situation as, as best we could. And you know, that, that was pretty much the message at, at halftime. Just keep fighting. Oh, I, I thought it was really interesting. Your first pass of the third quarter was your completion. You sort of rolled right and threw back to the left to Noah Fant for a 13-yard gain. What did that mean to you, and what do you remember about that play? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I remember seeing Noah catch it. It was honestly a bad ball, but I remember seeing Noah catch it and, um, you know, just the relief – just knowing that I just completed a pass in the NFL, um, you know, and it, it, it kind of hit me in that moment. But you know, it was on to the next play. But uh, you know, that that was super exciting to to experience, and you know, just to see that 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 dream come true. Yeah. Um. So the game ends, and you're on the field, and I wonder, did any of the Saints say anything to you after the game? Yeah, I um, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get to uh, you know, see Drew Brees, um, because you know that that was always an idol growing up. But it was great to see Taysom Hill. He uh, you know, he had a few words for me. Um, you know, keep my head up, and you know, he understood the situation I was in, and you know, he's, he he had some great things to say, and um, you know, I kind of just set it out after that. I thought it was really interesting. Uh... You know, on Twitter after the game, there's a lot of people, a lot of NFL people, including Demario Davis, you know, the all-pro linebacker, basically saying, 
hey, stay off my guy, uh, Kendall here. I mean, who, who could ever have done this in this situation? You were really getting a lot of support from people who 24 hours earlier had never really heard of you. Did you notice that? Um, yeah, I actually got to see, uh, you know, a, a message Kurt Warner had, um, you know, which is crazy because it's, you know, it's Kurt Warner. Um, and yeah, that, that, you know, that means a lot because it's coming from guys that, that know how hard the game is and, and know how hard the position is. Um, so that, no, it definitely meant a lot to, to get those words from those guys. Yeah. Now, as you sort of have had a couple of days to think about it, what would you say Sunday was like for you? Man, I, I, it's, it's, it's honestly nothing I can compare it to. Um, you know, it's honestly a dream come true. It's, you know, you, you say that you want these things to happen. And you're growing up and, you know, just one of the things that I can, I can mark off my list. And, you know, I'm just ready to get back to football now. So <laughs> I'll read you what Demario Davis said about you on Twitter, and I'd love to hear your reaction. A lot of respect for this guy. He handled this situation like a real pro. I can only imagine the range of emotions and the mental download he went through in 24 hours. Salute. So here's, here's an all-pro linebacker in the NFL saying this about you. What, when you hear that, what do you think? No, I'm just, you know, I'm super appreciative that, um, you know, he even took the time to, to speak out and, um, you know, show that support. You know, it's, 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 it's great that those guys understand the, you know, what was, what, what, what I was doing. And, um, you know, even though it's a tough game to, to still show support, you know, super appreciative. Um, anything stand out after the game that any of your coaches said to you? Uh, well, I actually spoke to, um, you know, John Elway for a bit after, after the game. And, you know, he told me, you know, great after it, you know, he appreciates, uh, you know, what I was, what I did for the team. And, you know, um, yeah, it was, I mean, I mean, that was the, the first time I really got to, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one with, with Elway. So that was, you know, that was a cool experience as well. Two other things. So when you're a kid growing up, were you the kind of kid who dreamed of the NFL at an early age or did you not really dream of it until you got to college? Let's say. No, I had NFL dreams since, you know, since I put on the first helmet. What was your team growing up? New York giants. Uh, yeah. Back when they had Tiki Barber. Um, and that was my squad. And, you know, it's been, it's been all over the place since then. Yeah. Um, so now that you have played a game at quarterback in the NFL, what is your NFL goal from here? Yeah. So I, you know, I'm just, I'm just looking to, you know, get back that out down that field and, you know, whatever, whatever position that is in, um, you know, whether it be special teams or offense. Um, so now I'm just, you know, working to, to get, get back out there and, and, and show what I can do and show what I'm here for. You don't want to be a one hit wonder, do you? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> um, I guess the last question I had now, when I was watching you uh, during the game, you know, wondering what kind of goes through your mind. I wonder now when you look back at this day, are you going to look back at it as a positive experience? because you got to play quarterback in the NFL, or are you going to look at it like a negative experience because you went one for nine, your team got killed? I mean, how, how are you going to look at this uh, experience in retrospect? No, this is this is definitely a positive experience. I, um, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing negative to say. I, you know, of course I didn't play as well as I wanted to, um, you know, uh, the team, uh, we didn't play as well as we wanted to as a team. Um, but, you know, something I believe is, is, is that things happen for a reason. Um, there's a reason I was there. There's a reason I got that opportunity. And, um, you know, we, we're just going to learn from it. And, 
you know, that's all we can take. Um, so, I, no, I think every experience is, you know, you can definitely look at it from a positive attitude. Kendall Hinton, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. And, and uh, you've had uh, an experience that the vast majority of American males wish they could have, which is to play quarterback in an NFL game. And you live to tell about it. So that's pretty cool. I appreciate it, Peter. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.